and it happened. Picard had it out with Beverly, and I have to say, despite her reasoning, I still feel there had to be some way to let Picard know he had a child. Her fear and worry over being the mother of Jean-Luc Picard's son were all well-founded, but there's still a part of me, the parent, I suppose, who can't imagine never knowing I had a child. Slightly less likely for me as a woman, but the feeling is relatable. Hi and welcome back to Katie's Corner in Space and this week's standout scenes for Picard Season 3, Episode 3, 17 Seconds. And I really love the thought put into the meaning of that. Starting with Riker introducing the idea of parental panic to Picard and the viewers to help prepare us for that fateful moment when Picard 2 would be waiting in a lift just to find out the fate of the child, it was really well done. I like the setup for the moment and I think the writers did a bang up job introducing us to that fear as a parent early in the show so we could relate to Picard's difficult turbo lift ride. Which is why that shared wait time for both men get my first vote for standout scenes. Now, watching Shaw get taken out was entertaining for a few seconds. The ramifications of the transfer of power was a real mess, though. Where just moments ago, Riker and Picard were having a heart-to-heart -heart discussing Jack and Jean-Luc's new role as a father, and of course, that wonderful number one moment. I think it might be time you called me number one. They suddenly turn on each other with what seem to be very different goals, and this turn of events changes the tone once again. Yeah, that is when things get tricky for the two men who were not long ago on the same mission and willing to work together to take risks, but that was before a nebula became an anomaly and before a game of hide and seek became a dangerous roulette game. I mean, a wormhole weapon to destroy a building is bad enough, and I'm sure there was a much more precise name, breach maker, quick tunnel creator, vortex assembler. But I'm going with wormhole weapon because this crazy weapon now has the Titan literally going in circles while the two men in charge fight over how to act and no action helps. Which is why the appearance of the rounded round runaway and that wormhole weapon get my second vote for standout scene. They tried running, though Picard wanted to fight but couldn't shake the Shrike because of a Verterium leak, which I will get to. Both options turn out to be bad, but we'll get to that too. The ship just goes through one side of the wormhole that appears and comes out the other side, going deeper into the anomaly. Without warning, a bomb takes out the engines and the Titan is being pulled into the gravity well, all crew aboard, to its demise. And not even the talkative Ensign LaForge has anything to provide at this point. Oh, I really enjoyed the little aside between her and Seven. It was a sweet moment, and while it didn't move the story along, it does help to get us to know both of them just a bit better. Same for Seven and Jack teaming up. Sometimes it's these little moments when you can tell the actors were enjoying themselves as well, and I think all three got a kick out of these scenes in particular. And back to the show. While under attack, it became very evident Beverly and her outdated medicine were very much needed, as more and more of the crew flood sickbay and overwhelm the medical staff. It was all hands on deck and Jack did his part, which led him to find a clue, then Seven, so he could attempt to help solve the dilemma he had inadvertently created while being saved. And this is where I get my top scene from, or actually a combination of scenes much like the episode's first standout scene. Both Jack and Worf discover the real culprit behind this entire mess. Jack while attempting to fix that pesky leak, Worf while interrogating a culprit of the Daystrom Institute robbery. They both discover changelings. And while I knew Dominion War issues could come up, for some reason I just didn't expect changelings. Actually, I do know why I wasn't expecting it. We are missing our favorite changeling. The Worf made note of a friend we can assume is Odo, Renee's character, as having warned him this could all happen. And I really enjoyed the scenes with Worf and Rafi this week. The way Worf kept trying to chill Rafi out a bit, but that changeling reveal just stole the show. As it turns out, a rebel faction who did not care for the end of the war has decided to take it upon themselves to, it seems, end all solid life in the known galaxy. I don't know, they weren't real specific as to the limit of the planned destruction, but it's bad. Now of course, what about that confrontation with Jean-Luc and Beverly? Again, we knew it was coming, and really Beverly's reasoning was sound. She wanted to protect her child, and his anonymity was really the best shield she could provide. However, my heart still breaks for Picard, and I feel there had to be some way to let him in on this parental status. But of course, in the Star Trek universe, we know what happens to long-lost sons of captains, even if they aren't actually theirs. Now, if you made it this far, hit that subscribe button so you'll be sure to get my next standout scenes for episode 4. And while we're here chatting, let me tell you how you can win a KCS stickers and water bottle. 
It's quite simple, really. Just give me a Vulcan salute emoji in the comments below for this episode. Each comment is its own entry, and on Monday at 6 p.m., I will announce the winner via community post here on YouTube and will notify the winner when selected. Now for my honorable mention of the week, and that's going to be the heart-to-heart -heart had between Riker and Jack, because honestly, it needed to be done, and Riker did it well. You could see Riker simply wanted this kid to understand Jean-Luc, and of course, the crew was now in danger because of the trouble Picard helped to get he and Beverly out from under. It's always nice to see the moment a kid gets it, understands the ramifications, and I think this was played well. So while it isn't necessarily a standout scene, it was most definitely an enjoyable one that helped to round out the tone of the episode. My thoughts on this week's episode are as follows. It was incredible. I always have some trouble trying to pick out the scenes that really stick out, but this week's was particularly difficult. I try to keep myself to three scenes and just describe the moments leading to them, but if I did that the whole way through this, I'd basically be describing nearly the entirety of the show. It was just that good in my opinion. Let's put aside the drama and craziness of shapeshifters and family drama, but with Vatic's unending attacks and inventive weaponry, I see no way for the Titan or the crew to survive. They are literally being sucked into the anomaly, which may or may not be alive. And every moment of the chase and attack was just on the edge of your seat fantastic. And I'll be honest, I'm just shocked at the concept of Vatic possibly being a shapeshifter herself, but the slick hair seems to be a clue in Picard, just as DS9, as to the identity of shapeshifters. Or maybe that's just me. I got a haircut this week and it's a bit flat, so noticing flat hair is happening to me right now. But yeah, that flat and slick hair seems to be a clue in the season. And once again, I'm just very deeply concerned for the survival of anyone really at this point. We better see Jordy swoop in and save them or something. Worf is busy and Klingon casual, partnering with Rafi, so I doubt he's coming yet. Though the only real downside I have of this episode concerns the fact we haven't left Metallus yet. Staying on one planet this long is getting a bit boring, so I do hope they head out soon and Jordy is introduced very soon as well. Maybe he'll have news on the even bigger threat Rafi and Worf are now suspecting. But until we find out what will happen next, please go back and check out these videos after you enter to win your swag, that is, and I'll see you there.